there are many rogue planets plying the Milky Way, and in our solar system, they float in search of prey. These are the wandering ones, sunless, they went astray, and they can harm healthy planets like sharks walking in days. Can you imagine what would happen if one struck Earth today? Hot seasons will be short and fierce with no time to plant crops. And cold times will stretch out in a gloomy ice backdrop. But, in a sense, don't we see them plaguing the third rock from the sun? In war zones, climate change threat, COVID-19 so greatly feared. And in the trigger of Africa, perhaps we have seen these free radicals morphed into herdsmen on rampage, dismal currency exchange rates, and farmers on forced sabbaticals. Yet, these may well be dwarfs next to the spirits rampaging within her. She lived, or rather existed, partly among the craggy alcoves in the hillside, and partly among the thick trees in the mock forest divide, separating the federal highway and the growing town with varying ethnicity, close to the most commercial city in the world's most populous black nation. She was a creature that inspired both admiration and trepidation. At six foot one, she was gracefully built and had a posture as erect as an arrow, Ever decked in denim, ripped to the ties, arms and midriff, all she needed was a wooden bow to complete the look of a black Amazon chief. But the max crisscrossing her bare limbs and belly and the incendiary agony in her wild eyes had a dark spelling. Inscriptions of pain carved again and again by her own nails on her own body. Her wails were often heard at sunset and in half moons, rage filled and blood calling. She might have been a beauty queen, but then the Aye, as they are frequently and fearfully called, whimsical and mean, had engulfed her soul in ferocious, burning insanity, and trying to tame her had proven to be an exercise in vanity. The beans foaming out in insidious blackness harnessed a vessel with a mighty madness. As hard to pin down as a fox was, she, she had crippled men with kicks like an ox's. Once, six men had grabbed her after shooting several darts, what it takes to down a lion. But she'd flung them all off, broken the jaws of three and begun to gallivant before they got her at last with many more darts, what it takes to drop an elephant. Three times she'd been treated in the nation's best asylum, known in some quarters as the left zone. But on all occasions, after three months of keeping mum, she'd roar and rail, break doors and even chains, till the facility would look like it had been hit by lightning and hail. And then she would make her escape during heavy rain always in the rain to somehow trek back to that tough she'd found as her home <sighs> legend has it that they tried to take her out <laughs> like a bad dog you know but the bullets had been wound in a mysterious path and fell behind her in a crescent shaped row anyway they let her be in her torment, all alone, since there were no reports of anyone that she beat, except for those who dared to cross her path, the little dusty streets near her abode. So, she got her very own clothes, a winding called a sack, which the locals named Wario Nireti, meaning the mad one has no hope. The townsfolk kept clear, no one drew near, Transporters gave a wide berth till youth core members came to serve on that quaint side of earth. 
it became a jogging route which they traversed in groups for a while it was the excise suit and they mocked the indigenes for being superstitious citizens then she struck a whole batch of able-bodied men five strong fellows laid on drip for a week after that a panic ensued throughout the whole community a bad label could soil their trading and farming industry so they settled for alternative medicine to overcome this neighborhood this neighborhood enemy a few days later at the rising of the sun a priest in multicolored garb stood at a point where her street made a turn he was swinging a bible and two other books attached to a bulb in his left hand was a censer spewing choking incense yeah yeah you are john he cried i command you but he never finished that sentence for he heard earth shattering roars and vigorous rustling <laughs> like that from a wild boar and promptly fled from that menace <laughs> just before she burst out from the bush so after much deliberation another kind of priest was sent one held in veneration a man of influence from the city for this job his status seemed befitting seven silver crosses dangled from his neck chains and he had taken great pains to bring along a bottle of water collected over 40 days from dewdrops on a mountain much bolder than the fest he started sprinkling stepping in with zest in the name of jesus whom bishop elemi meiji preaches i command you but he was cut short by horn-like screams the kind of sound a train gives up in warning <laughs> within an inch of his life escaping with just his boxes and many stripes and great fear fell on the folks of that region all was quiet until a young man stepped out on a mission he was one of the resident core members a musician with a simple vision he lived a fasted life and he could pray all night but more than that his faith could ride wild tides on one fine market day just as evening began he set up a tent along with his band singing holy praises and hymns in a steady sweet stream not far from the route to her den and cautiously in twos and threes townsfolk came out there to see and strange things began to happen the limping could now leap the dim of eyes saw sights that tripped and even some possessed by soul pirates were freed then suddenly down fell the rain still the people endured the strain of being pounded by water wind and cold as lightning flashed and thunder rolled and she appeared and all scattered all except that young man with a box guitar his resonant voice and eyes full of stars and he was singing oh, 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 ah. Just real, oh, oh, may your land be free of weeds, may your earth be called just real, oh, oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, be free, be healed. Woman be free. 
be here. Then, with a horrible voice like a thousand bottles smashing, mixed with the slow of a hundred drunkards awakening, she howled and fell kneeling. <laughs> And she groveled and squirmed and hissed with please. Now, about five kilometers from where she lived was a much higher hillside near the Bar Les Villa, leading towards the highest relief, a cliff, after which was a sheer drop into a large rushing river. A large number of pigs were feeding there from afar. They looked like toys. Then the woman screaming pointed. And the singer said, Yes, you may go into the swine. There was a chorus of beasts snarling and a symphony of growling and savage percussions of stampede. And her body flopped down, lifeless, it seemed. Then from the other hillside, there was a tremor as all the pigs dashed up all at once off the cliff to drown in the river. The town elders approached the way to her lair about an hour later and they froze in one accord because she sat down bare at his feet, hair combed, bathed, well dressed, while he softly sang and played beautiful chords. So, cap in hand, the ballet came with his counsel, trembling, and faced the young man swallowing. Uh, <coughs> thank you for your help, but, but please could you redeploy as soon as you can? We know your deed is laudable. In fact, we have made you honorable, but we beg you, leave our word. And after reaching a safe distance, they cried, and take her along. With a sad smile, he turned to go, and she, weeping, let me be with you. I can help with your ministry, be your apprentice, your... No, he said firmly. I found grace, like you. Find your family and tell everyone what his grace has done in you. As for that community, they never did get over that incident, forever spooked by the swine accident. They don't rear or eat pigs till this day. And sadly, not all that were made well there in that place stayed healed. One man went back to totems and traditions, leaving his soul in a vacuum. So the entity that left returned with seven rovers more wicked than itself. And the last state of the universe within that man became worse than the first. But she grew in faith and wisdom and power. Her life story governed many hearts throughout the six states across the southwest and then captured four states in the north central region. Hers was a tale that transcended religion. And with her hands, she carved special marvels of art, weaving them in tapestry, in textiles, on canvas. Always signing off, not with her initials, but with a cross, blood, and a crown of thorns. And these works traveled the world causing miracles most peculiar wherever they were hanging, shining the colors of May in lives once drab and gray. Oh
land be free of weeds May your earth be called just real In the name of Jesus Christ